everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode nine. Last time we finished off the episode recruiting Blackwall, which was really exciting. A Grey Warden who has been training farmers to fight off people and had no idea that all of the other Grey Wardens had vanished. We've recruited him. We've got our very own Grey Warden. It doesn't, it feels weird. <laughs> He's just like, yes, I will join the Inquisition. So we now have, it's, it's, he's not like an agent where we've like acquired agents, but he's a new companion. So they've put a Grey Warden in for us, which is cool. I'm not really sure how that's going to work in terms of like Grey Warden politics. I guess I haven't looked at their like legally binding contract arrangements. I don't know if they're able to like sign up for extracurricular activities, but you know, there isn't a blight right now. And, uh, you know, there is a hole in the sky. So maybe, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, we have a note, which is a letter found on the body of a bandit who stole from refugees in the hinterlands. The ink is smudged and only a few sentences can be made out. You can die pretending you'll earn back your soldier's honor, or you can do something with the skills that son of a bitch taught you. Spent some time with my boys. No one will know who you are in Ferelden, and it's not so bad. A little bit of smuggling, a little bit of extortion, you'll get used to it. Interesting. Spend some time with my boys. No one will know who you are in Ferelden. Move to a new part of uh, Thetis, and no one knows who you are. It was much easier back then, you know? You could just move and go, yes, I'm Sir Reginald. And uh, you've never heard of anyone else by that name, because that is me. And I certainly you didn't used to be anyone else. <laughs> the Orlesian Empire. There are many lords and ladies in Valreo, and I mean this literally. Once, the system of noble titles in Orlais was labyrinthine. There were barons and baronesses and baronets and sub sir barons and a horde of others, each with its own origins and its own nuances of comparison. The Orlesian aristocracy is ancient and much given to competition. All the nobility play the grand game, as it is known, whether they wish to or not. It is a game of reputation and patronage, where moves are made with rumours and scandal is the chief weapon. No gentle game, this. More blood has been drawn as a result of the grand game than any war the Orlesians have fought. Of this, I am assured by almost every gentleman here. As far as titles went, everything changed with the coming of Emperor Draken, who established the Orlesian Empire as it exists now, and who created the Chantry. There is no more venerated figure in Orlais. In Valroyo, the statue of Draken still stands as tall as the statue of Andraste. Draken determined that the Grand Game was tearing Orlais apart, so he abolished all titles besides his own and Lord and Lady. I am told, with some twittering amusement, that this action did not end the Grand Game as Draken had intended. Now the lords and ladies collected unofficial titles rather than official ones, such as the exalted patron of Tassus Clay or uncle to the champion of Trems. It is a headache to remember such titles, and one winces to think of the poor doorman at the bowls who must rattle them off as each guest enters the room. The aristocracy is different from Ferelden in other ways as well. The Orlesian's right to rule stems directly from the maker. There exists neither the concept of rule by merit nor the slightest notion of rebellion. If one is not noble, one aspires to be, or at least aspires to be in the good graces of a noble, and is ever watching for a way to enter the patronage of those better placed in the grand game. And then there are the masks and the cosmetics. I have not seen so much paint since the kennels at Hyver, but that is another story. And I think we've read a codex entry that's very similar to this one, with all of the titles in Orlais. I would love to go to uh, an Orlais related, an Orlesian related event and actually witness the roll call take place. It'd be kind of hilarious. All right. So in the hinterlands, we kind of ran straight over to here because we did soulless checking out an artifact as well. Uh, there's definitely more to do because we've got to go and visit the mages. Um, and it looks like there's the choice between visiting the mages or visiting the Templars. Uh, I think that for our purposes of our story, we will be checking out the mages. 
but I am interested in potentially doing one of those things that we do sometimes is we'll investigate an altern alternate outcome and we'll see if we'll go to the Templars instead. But we'll see. Uh, we might not have time for it, uh, but I'll, I'll try and make a note of it regardless. If not, we'll have to revisit it in that decision another day. But it's another bright and sunny day in the Hinterlands, land of quests. Um, we're going to head back to Haven, first and foremost, because I think this is a good opportunity to talk to our new friend and then maybe even rearrange our party setup because I was saying that we would take Vivian um, to the mages. I also want to bring Blackwall because Fiona has Grey Warden ties. So by bringing a Grey Warden and Vivian, I just feel like there's spice there. And then um, what get, what becomes really difficult about that is I want to bring Varric, but I think we're going to have to bring Solus as well, being another mage. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. This is the problem when you're just like, I want to take everyone and we cannot. Travel safely. Oh, there he is. Okay. Smithing is hot work. He's just walking around the, the blacksmith. Alright. Hello, mate. He's turned his back on me. That's very rude of you, sire. Look at this boy. Oh. God. Jump scare. Take a look at it. So much easier to ignore when it's far away. And to actually walk out of it. To be that close. I was expecting it to like zoom into his face and us to go into a conversation. <laughs> it just like jump cut to his face, super close. You could get closer. It's right there. We could take a trip if you're that curious. I'm gonna have to decline. At least until I learn more about it. I have to admit, I thought you'd be human. Yes. Being up front is better than knife fear. It was a foolish thought. Should have known better than to say anything. It's what you do and how you do it that's important. Just one question then. How do you think you fit in with all this? Ugh, I hate that as like even an option that's so weird. I just want to help stop the war. Try to put things back in order. A worthy goal, one I'm happy to support. For me, I'll be satisfied so long as we find the bastards that killed the Divine. They owe us some answers. Okay. I can get behind that. That's what he was staring at. That makes sense. <laughs> sir! Come back, sir. That fucking NPC, though, that just like... On fucking wheelies on his shoes, just zooming through. Oh, cool. He has like a, an idle lean because he's so suave and cool. I've heard rumors of abandoned warden camps all over these parts. If we have time, I'd like to take a look, see if there's anything we can salvage. Okay. Ooh, ooh, right, yes. Mm. That is true. Devilishly handsome bearded fellow that he is. Um, yes, interesting. Okay, maybe. Maybe. I'll think on that one. That's not a that's not a no. Let's talk about the Grey Wardens. You must know a lot about them. Ah, the Wardens. I'm afraid we're less exciting than we seem. Okay. <laughs> You're literally responsible for like defeating archdemons. You're super interesting. I've been there. The blight's been over for ten years. What do Wardens do when the world's not ending? There are still Darkspawn. Just because we killed so many in Ferelden doesn't mean they're gone. And the world is not so peaceful that there's no use for good men with swords. Sometimes you have to figure out for yourself what the pledge to protect others really means. It's not always about just archdemons and blights. Where were you during the blight? I was in Ferelden. On my own, like always. Quietly killed my fair share of Darkspawn too. You're in Ferelden? So why didn't I see you during 
Dragon Age Origins. What the fuck? Doubt? Excuse me? Quietly killed my fair share of Darkspawn. Okay. You haven't had contact with other wardens for a while. Why were you on your own? It's what I've always done. Recruitment only requires one man. Besides, I've always been a loner. Works best for everyone that way. But the Grey Wardens aren't loners. They, they get recruited into it. You're a team. We even had a Grey Warden come through from Orlay. Only to have such a... He, he went out like a goddamn hero. He got a nice little uh, hit on the Archdemon's wing. Where was Gondor? Where was Gondor? This guy. What the fuck? Did they just retcon a, just a random Grey Warden just doing... I mean, I guess, like, Ferelden's a big place, but it's a blight. And he was nowhere to be seen during the action. That's strange. So you have no idea where the rest of the Wardens are? Do you find that odd? The blight is over. We don't need an organized force. And orders don't change much from day to day. <laughs> For the last thousand years or so, it's been just... Find Darkspawn, kill them, repeat as necessary. Let's continue this at another time. As you wish. I'll be here if you need me. I guess this is the problem with... Ooh, this is cool. Memories of the Grey, okay. Artifacts. Um, oh. I guess this is the problem of, like, making a new game. You, obviously, when you make a game... You don't know what you're going to be doing in the future in terms of storytelling and characters. And then if you want to add someone in. But then you could just say that he was a Grey Warden from somewhere else. But the fact that they're specifically saying that he's a Grey Warden who was chilling in for Elden during the Blight is super strange. And, so oh my God. and saying that he's a loner as well? That, that doesn't line up with a Grey Warden philosophy. Inquisitor. I want to hear more about you. <laughs> Compared to yours, my life will seem dull indeed. Sure. Your name, Blackwall, doesn't sound Orlesian. Marcher then, Ferelden. I was from the Free Marchers originally. Markham, that was a long time ago. Another life. I hear that many wardens were once criminals. You're right. And when you join, your past is forgotten, so let's leave it that way. Hmm. Okay. So, shady past. Because this is something that I kind of misunderstood about Grey Wardens in Dragon Age Origins, right? And I, I think it's kind of fair to get lost in the source of Dragon Age and then kind of forget some critical elements, is the Grey Wardens aren't necessarily good people in terms of who they're made up of and that's something that you forget because you're playing a story where you are the heroes and you are fighting evil and you are killing the archdemon to save the world so while you're playing the game it kind of skews your perspective there because you are doing these things that are good and then you forget that grey wardens are kind of shitty people sometimes that are then recruited into this situation and I kind of misunderstood that during the low gain sequence of recruiting him to become a Grey Warden when that opportunity came up because I like thought it was really strange and I disagreed with it and I was like, that doesn't make any sense when it makes perfect sense because that's kind of, Grey Wardens are just made up of like anyone and everyone, scumbags included. So I kind of like, I wrestled with that because like I just said, like you have this mentality that you're a hero that you forget that also... A lot of people, their pasts come uh, can have like particularly shady backgrounds, and this guy's definitely confirming he's in one of those shady backgrounds. Isn't it really interesting that we we just read a note that we found in the same area that Blackwall we meet Blackwall, and it's like, go to Ferelden. Uh, no one will know who you are, and this is the same sort of line of dialogue that's same sort of train of thought what did you do before you became a warden i was 
A soldier, a, a nobody trained to wield a sword and follow orders. I grew weary of fighting other men's wars. So you became a warden? More or less. Becoming a Grey Warden was the first time I felt like I mattered. The life I led before seems hollow in comparison. Perhaps one day it will fade away. Why did you join the Wardens? Because they remember honor and sacrifice. Words that have little meaning to the rest of us. Because they lay down their lives for those they have sworn to protect. We all need to believe there are such men in the world. I needed to believe I could be one of them. We can continue this discussion at another time. Very well. This is my suspicious face. I have suspicious characters in my party. You know? A couple of them. Where are you going, man? Inquisitor? What do you think of the Inquisition? I expected more. More men. Better equipment. You may have Andraste's favor, but wars are won by men. Soldiers. Brute force is not always the answer. There are plenty of other paths to victory. <laughs> True enough. Still, it never hurts to be prepared. One thing I will say about your men. They're passionate. Devoted. You inspire them. Build on that foundation. And you will have an army that makes nations tremble. Oh, jeez. There's a bunch. You must have some feelings about our friends. Have you seen the stories Varric's been writing? His descriptions of me are... colourful, to say the least. I wonder what his nickname is. It's gotta be something to do with his beard. You must have some feelings about our friends. Madame Vivian only allied with the Inquisition because she knows it will bring her power. The most poisonous snakes are often the most beautiful. I agree with that. I agree with that. A man's only just rocked up and he can see it just like I can. Uh, yeah. You must have some feelings about our friends. Talked with Solus the other day. That man knows all there is to know about everything. Yep, there's our two suspicious party members. The one who was in the right place at the right time that knows everything conveniently. Who doesn't follow any sort of group. He's just like, yeah, I'm just a guy. Just a lone wolf doing my own thing. And then we've got this guy who's like, just a lone wolf doing my own thing. I was in Ferelden during the Blight. I'm like, okay. Either we I'm experiencing retcons that are really strange with this guy or there's reason to be like why does your story not line up with what I know you must have some feelings about our friends talked with Solus the other day there's more people Man knows all there is to know about everything tell me what you think about Sarah you must have some feelings about our friends have you seen the stories Varric's been writing? Is it random? His descriptions of me are colourful, to say the least. So Varric, Vivian and Solus, what about anyone else? You must have some feelings about our friends. I fear for Cassandra sometimes, the way she throws herself into battle. I've never known a warrior like her. Okay, for some reason it's randomised. It's It doesn't go in order of any, everyone else. So we're playing like Russian roulette with our friends here. We're rolling the revolver. All right, talk to me about someone that I haven't mentioned yet. You must have some feelings about our friends. Have you seen the stories? Very no, writing. wrong. Is discreet. You must have some feelings about our friends. Madame v No, wrong. <laughs> again, again, damn it. Sarah doesn't know who she is or what she wants doesn't even care that's also true i would i he has good he has good opinions on everyone so far ones that i agree with uh who's left um does it will he talk about 
Will it, does he only talk about our companions? I don't know if he'll talk about, like, Cullen and Josephine and Liliana. I fear for Cassandra sometimes. I reckon it might just be my party members. Battle. I've never known a warrior like her. What do you think of the Inquisition's cause? Restoring order is a goal I support wholeheartedly. But that's not the end of it, is it? Not by a half. The Lady Seeker believes we are restoring the Chantry. Others say it needs reform. I don't know where you stand on the matter, and I'll admit I haven't made up my mind either. Fence sitting gang, let's go. What do you think about all this trouble between the Mages and Templars? Looking at it from where we stand, it seems inevitable. But that could be hindsight. How many of us actually saw it coming? Either way, I don't think the Chantry will ever recover. Oh, thoughts on my advisors is obviously good. What do you think of Haven? It's a war camp that was once a pilgrim's refuge. It's the state of the world though, isn't it? Holy ground turned into a battlefield. Pity about that temple. Would have been nice to see it. What do you think of my advisors? Josephine's lovely and craftier than you'd expect. The Inquisition could not have picked a better ambassador. Yep. What do you think of my advisors? Liliana seems nice. Also a little frightening, but mostly nice. Oh, ooh, why is this the only one that we can respond to? No one's watching? Someone's in the tree right now with binoculars, listening for whenever Leliana's name is mentioned. You're not saying that for my benefit, are you? Are you so certain you're being watched? Are you so certain we aren't? I don't want to wake up with a blade in my kidneys if I can help it. <laughs> what do you think of my advisors? Cullen. He's got the look of a man who's been through too much. He's seen the best and the worst of humanity, and I think he still struggles with where that leaves him. Still, I trust him to watch my back. Damn. He's got really... He nailed every single character. Um, really well, actually. That's kind of bizarre. Every single opinion he has on all of the characters, I have the same thoughts on. We should return to our duties. As you wish. You are, after all, in charge. And especially with, like, yeah, Colin went through too much just in Dragon Age Origins. Man shat himself at the circle because of what happened, and rightly so. Interesting talk with this one. Um, I don't know if maybe I just have my tinfoil hat on. Feels strange, that discussion. Uh, but also some good dialogue in terms of, like, talking about other characters. I'm excited that we have some familiar faces in the form of, like, Varric and Cullen, Leliana, and even Cassandra a little bit based on her small appearances in Dragon Age 2. And then we've got brand new characters as well. I think it's great. This is a really nice blend. Dragon Age 2 was a fresh start. There's a clean slate. You're in a different place, different people, you're removed from everything. And what I really like about this game is that it really has brought in elements from everything in a really nice way. We're back in Ferelden. We've got that Dragon Age Origins type feel. Everything is really massive and open instead of like a little bit like more contained. Uh, we've got characters from Origins showing up again. There's, we're talking about the events from Origins quite a lot. And then we've got our Dragon Age 2 characters here as well. This is such a satisfying third game in that sense that it's taking bits and pieces of the previous two and throwing it into a new experience. And I'm super excited. It just makes me so happy. And there's... It's a lore extravaganza that we've only just started. You know? Like we've only just started. <laughs> But very, very good. I'm, I'm liking it. Um, we're going to go check on our... We're going to go check on our war council because obviously I set them to work. And I think they're, they're obviously all ready because we're playing a new, uh, new episode. We're on a new day now. I'll get them to... Uh, 
check out some other things. These we got our red Jenny My Inquisition needs bees. In case there's any trouble. We've received weapon plans and located an apiary to supply us. When the idea was presented, the beekeeper tented his fingers and sneered, Of course! Quite disturbing. We've got a jar of bees <laughs> grenade recipe. <laughs> what the fuck? Bees! <laughs> Surprise! Nice. Okay. Um, the Cult of Andraste. It's incredible how many passages remained undiscovered even after the Chantry's arrival, and they scoured every inch of these mountains for years in search of anything related to the sacred ashes. The cult didn't build all of this. It was here long before, and who knows how many years it would take to find it all. Of the new passages uncovered during the search, most were long empty or contained goods far beyond salvage. A few, however, yielded some artifacts of interest. And one evidently contains strange runes we have yet to translate. If we can find someone capable of doing so, they might prove of use. Like those runes uh, that we found with the veil fire, maybe? Life Ward Amulet, okay. And uh, I think I had one in Ole. I can't wait to go here. One of these days. <laughs> I have to finish a particular main story quest first, and then we can go. Uh, the Chantry remains. Diplomacy won the day. The clerics chosen to receive aid have been most appreciative and have successfully drowned out our detractors. This caused an internal struggle. Clerics hiring thugs to kill other clerics. I was forced to intervene. Such despicable behavior from those who aspire to the Sunburst throne. The mood in the Grand Cathedral is tense, but for now, the Chantry can be counted our political ally. 30 influence. Nice. Okay. And now we have three things that we can do. Utilize the Grey Warden Treaties as well. So, Red Jenny, drop and grab. So, Sarah's given us one of these. So for your big hats, Lord whoever says you're rubbish, your servants don't care, but could drop a few things for them. They'll give Josephine a surprise. I think scrolls or something. And Sarah's name 37 times. We require middlemen, secure the goods and the favor of the noble. With no time for games, stop with this with soldiers and find favor with this noble. And the heraldry is of a minor house. Shall we instead see what the surprise might be? Um, okay. Again, I will assess my options before determining which three we send off. The Chantry remains is done. Truth or dare, the Imperial Court. A letter addressed to Vivian lies opened on the table. Josephine, darling, you should take care of this. So you cannot have heard the shocking allegations against the Inquisition. So that was the, the Inquisition suck. Get away from them. We need the support of the nobles to combat this rumor. I can arrange a few key visits. Proving the divine's death would just be used against us. We need to find the source and we can't prove the divine is dead, but we can escort people to the crater to see it for themselves. This does seem like a Josephine mission. So tentatively, we'll, we might do that. Utilize the Grey Warden treaties. Oh, we can only do Josephine for this one. The Inquisition is in its infancy, building an organization such as this is like building an army. You need soldiers, weapons to arm them, food to feed them, and that's just the beginning. I joined knowing I could make a difference. I have Grey Warden treaties, and these allow us to take what's needed, when needed. We do not face a blight, but surely a torn sky warrants as much concern. Consider it. I mean, the fact that he's also got Grey Warden treaties is very interesting. Um... Josephine says this could work. The blight is but 10 years past and Thetis remembers how we were saved. I can use the treaties, leverage the goodwill owed the wardens and use it for the Inquisition. Well, we're putting Josephine on that one because she can only do that one. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to put Cullen on this one. To work? Yep. And then uh, Truth or Dare the Imperial Court... I feel like Josephine would have been the best one for this, but Leliana, uh, we could find the source of the rumor. She can do some spies. All right, we'll send Leliana we'll see what we have. to that one. There we go. All right, there's those three missions done. 
well not done but in progress um, and that's all good and then the next one we just need to do champions of the just oh actually no champions of the just is um Ah, uh, yes. Choosing the Templars will make it impossible to work with the mages. Liliana and Josephine have been working tirelessly to convince, coerce, and win over some of Orlea's most influential houses. Ten noble families will help the Inquisition pressure the Templars into sealing the breach, traveling to Therenthal Red Redoubt, and demanding the Lord Seeker deal with them or face the wrath of Orlea. The Inquisition has promised the Herald of Andraste as its voice in these negotiations. So, I'll make a save before we visit the mages and we'll have to check out the uh, the Templar option as well. I think that would just be just a good idea so we can check out an alternate outcome. Okay, Sarah approves of the Jar of Bees and I have a Life Ward Amulet um, which Gives me a heal. When a blow is about to drop a character's health below zero, the amulet shatters and heals the character for 50. Nice. Lovely. I'm struggling to choose my next destination. Uh, we haven't been here before. We haven't been to the Fallow Mire. There's a lot to do in the Hinterlands. There's stuff to do in Storm Coast. Um... We haven't even been to the Forbidden Oasis yet. There's so much to do. And that's like the thing is like I'm thinking about all this stuff. And then I'm like, there's still there's the main quest as well. There's a lot to do. Um, and then I don't want to like end up like spreading myself too thin where we've just like dipped our toes in just every area. I don't know. It, fe it feels strange because uh, I think I'm wrestling with like a completionist mindset of go to an area, do all the things, move on to the next one, uh, like Mass Effect Andromeda planets or um, go here, do some stuff, go there, do some stuff and just like take turns. And I think we might have to end up doing that. Um Let's go to the Fallow Mire. We haven't been here yet. And we can do Memories of the Grey and uh, this Lost Souls thing. So Inquisition soldiers are missing in the uncharted marshes of Southern Ferelden. So let's check it out. Um, and while we're in like a non-main story location, I think this could be a cool opportunity to bring some other characters with us. Um, which does actually remind me I do need to sell a lot of stuff in my inventory um, so I might do that first let's go to the fellow Maya I will bring I'll bring the other three so we're gonna, we're gonna bring Sarah Vivian and Blackwall which is just a totally different arrangement it's another rogue warrior and mage. <laughs> so we just swap them out for our other rogue warrior and mage. Um, and I guess we'll get some more party banter that way. And then I'll probably mix it up with having other characters talk to each other as well. Because I feel like we could get some really interesting like mage to mage convo. Varric's probably going to have good conversation with all of them. Uh, so it's going to be a, a mixture um, I'm not sure how often the party banter happens, but it might even get to a point where we just put a party together. We just go somewhere and I just sit there and wait for them to talk to each other and we can just compile that together as well. Who knows? Who knows? But that's our plan. We'll do the Fallow Maya. So um, let me sell some stuff and then I'll determine what equipment I've got that'll be the best for each and all of my teammates um, I just need to make sure I save a staff a bow and uh, a sword um, oh actually Blackwall I wonder if Blackwall could be he could be a great like two-handed warrior instead maybe that would be quite interesting um, Bane of Red Crossing I think we might be able to give to Sarah and then the Prismatic Great Axe is probably our strongest the axes. 
So I'm going to do all of this boring inventory arrangement and then we'll go to the fallow mire. All right, we are set up, ready to go. Um, in our little team, <laughs> look at this little feather hat. When you, when you look at the inventory in this screen and they all have their hats, it's so funny. Um, something that's really cool about Vivian's setup with this armor is the apprentice armor doesn't change her clothing because she's got the uh the enchanter coat is what she comes with you can see that it like just changes like the sleeves which is really cool and then apprentice just changes that so it keeps this and i think i really like that because it's like keeps some sort of identity to each character because it, it feels weird. I don't want to change Varric's clothes because I'm so used to him just wearing the same thing for all of Dragon Age 2. So it's kind of funny. Um, we get to see every character in the DLC gear, <laughs> which it looks good on everyone. <laughs> uh, it looks great on everyone, um, man or woman, which is amazing. It's just so great. Uh, the light adventurer armor is pretty cool. Um, like the designs on all of this equipment, even like the basic stuff is really cool. And we've got the Orlesian Hennen uh, for the headpiece. Uh, we've put Blackwall in the Avar armor because they don't come with anything. They don't even come with any weapons. I had to give him his own his own thing. He can't use the battle axe yet because you need to be level 12 for that. So it's going to take a while. Um, and I kind of want to get a two handed weapon. I might craft one and see what we can do. Um, but yes, black wall shredded with that Antom Sar, and then the Chakra Tar, we got the black wall nipples. There we go. They are perky. And then we can have him wear this if we want him to wear exactly what Cassandra's wearing. Um, but I've given him something a little more unique. He's rocking that DLC gear. Um, and then we've got Sarah in the medium adventure armor, which is really cool. I think this suits her a lot. Um, the, again, the design and all the details and everything is really cool. Um, her default looks like this when she doesn't have anything on, which is completely different to what she looks like in the tavern, which has got like yellow leggings on. So I thought that was really weird. Um, but we'll give her the medium adventure armor. Uh, she also, uh, can wear these. Interestingly enough, this one's pretty cool. Looking like a proper hunter with that bow. But that's our group. That's our arrangement. They are now kitted out. I haven't leveled them though. Um, and I'm assuming I should be able to level everyone here while we're out. Yes. Okay. So it looks like they are very clean slates. They've got nothing spent yet. So we can have Sarah be proper rogue with daggers, maybe, instead of archery with the longbow. Um, I might have to craft some some daggers just to make her a little more unique than Varric, who's got Bianca. Um, and then Blackwall... He's also currently a clean slate, which is kind of good because we could have him be like a two-handed battle master and Cassandra's the sword and shield vanguard. So that's kind of interesting. And then Vivian. Um, Vivian also doesn't have anything yet either. So we'll probably do some spirit stuff. I'll probably do some spirit stuff. But I'm going to have a look and see what we can craft. And that might be the best way. Craft some daggers for Sarah. Craft a, a two-handed blade for Blackwall. And then level them up so I can spec their abilities. Uh, so let's have a look. Craft weapons. Let's see what we can make. Um, all right. Two-handed weapons. We can make a double-bearded axe or a pointed maul. Uh, the axe gives us 118 DPS. And... Oh, we can make it even more if we... Depending on the material. I really like this. Because it changes the, the, the look of it as well. It looks like there's a lot of depth to the crafting. And it makes me very excited. So, 
if we put... What slot is this? This is the damage slot. Um, Drake Stone, plus 2% armor penetration, or if it's in defense, plus 10 health. That's much better. I'd go for the health. Um... Also, plus one constitution. Plus one strength. Strength plus target. Um, and then we don't have enough summer stone and serpent stones. I need to be getting more of these out in the wild. I think what we'll do is in the utility slot, which only needs six, we'll put Drake stone on it. Plus one constitution, plus ten to health. And then, I guess we could do Drake Stone on both. Because a plus one percent attack is just kind of like, eh. At this point, it's more just like a visual thing. Um, oh, it does change the, the damage type, it looks like. So, staff damage type, fire, electricity, cold. But I think that's if you're using this on an actual staff, not just one of these normal weapons. Uh, I'm going to go for the plus 2%. We'll just do double Drake Stone. I have an Enduring Great Axe. Um, and then for daggers, we can make a Curved Dagger or and a Balanced Dagger Grip. Now, I'm assuming we want to make two daggers dual wield those bad boys so let's take a look um i guess these are all the same on everything yeah they're the same on everything but this is but this is different because this is like a softer material so damage and offense instead of it being utility okay so the, we look, we're going to look at the offense, offense slot. So this would be heal on kill, barrier damage bonus. Heal on kill, barrier damage bonus. That's one attack. Okay, well we'll make it with cotton. 1.5% chance to heal on kill. And then on damage. This is the primary slot. I'm a little confused on the descriptions. Like, this is the offense slot, so I assume that it would only be the offense slot. And then, yes, primary slot is this one, right? Otherwise known as the damage slot. And it doesn't really change much, it just has like low armor rating. So I don't think that Great Axe that we did gives us plus 10 health at all, actually. No, it doesn't, because we didn't put it on a defense slot. But we put it on utility, so it gives us plus one constitution. We're learning. We're learning crafting. We'll get there. And then we'll obviously become masters of it, clearly. Um, let's do Onyx, because I want to have two daggers. A healing knife. And then we'll, we can craft a grip and I assume that we can just put this on the dagger itself guard damage bonus plus two attack stagger on hit attack armor penetration and then so it's two offense slots critical chance critical damage bonus sunder on hit critical damage bonus flanking damage bonus Okay, they're all just small little things. This is kind of like that shitty armor crafting mechanic when you get, you craft something and it's like 0.62% chance to get a critical hit. And you're like, eh? <laughs> like the difference is so minuscule that you're just like, you put thought into it, but then at the same time you're like, yeah. Deadly grip. And I think I need to make two of those. It's one for each dagger. So we'll give uh, 
We'll do different ones for each of them. Let's do critical chance. A precise, stunning grip. And we'll do onyx again for that. And we've got one that's a heal on kill, which is 5% heal on kill already. Uh, so we'll go for barrier damage bonus for the other one. Dissolving knife. Perfect. Okay. Crafted, mate. That's good. Uh, as we get more familiar with crafting, we'll be able to cut down the time that we spend doing the crafting. So we shouldn't have to worry about that so much. Let's give Blackwall his Enduring Great Axe. There you go. So then we can start specking his um, Dual Wielding Tree, and then we'll give you a Dissolving Knife. Oh god, hang on. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> I got really confused. I clicked Mercenary Lord Blade. I was like, wait a minute, I swear these are for rogues. Oh, okay, can you please click the right thing? There we go, okay. Dissolving knife, healing knife. Perfect. You've got your daggers, Sarah. There we go. And then to then put the upgrades on, I have to go like modify weapons. Oh, do I have to? Hang on. Must they be unequipped before I can put a thing on them? Hold on. <coughs> Unequip. Get that off of you. Um, Sarah. Unequip your knives, please. Put the grip in. This is so annoying. All right, get gripped. Confirm changes, okay. And then grip. Confirm changes. Okay, you've got your grips on. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I don't think I've got anything for these, so that's fine. Good. Okay. It'd be nice if you didn't have to have the weapon unequipped while you were doing it. That's okay. If you could just do it to equipped items, that would be... I'd be fine with that. I would be happy with that. Lovely. Alright. That's that little bit of nonsense out of the way. We've crafted them some stuff. And then... Now comes the abilities. Alright. So, Vivian has nine points to spend. So I might mix this one up and I'll do like spirit and something else. So, barrier with a cooldown reduction and guiding spirit and peaceful aura. And I reckon we could go for mind blast. Strength of Spirits. Each enemy you strike with Mind Blast increases your protective barrier. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Just doing some great points in Spirit there. I'm going to lock that in, and then I'll do a couple of these bad boys. Energy Barrage, because I don't have that. And then... Additional damage, but all targets are selected. That's fine. And then you can have an attacking spell too. Perfect, Vivian. Black wall. We'll do the two-handed tree. 150% weapon damage. Ready to deflect the next incoming attack. Okay. Mighty blow. Deliver a powerful attack that crumples foes, leaving them knocked down for a short time. You do more damage to targets that are already knocked down. Every critical hit reduces the cooldown times of your abilities. 
Critical hits crack armor and rend shields. Okay, perfect. Oh, Whirlwind is back. Yes, and Pommel Strike is back. Tremor, Earth Shaking Strike. Tear open the ground with a shockwave that batters enemies caught in its path. Right. Um, Mighty Blow costs less stamina and deals increased damage that have been knocked down. Slow to get back to their feet. All right, get that. And Flawless Defense, countering an enemy's attack now does bonus damage. And your counterattack does more damage and slashes in a full circle. That seems nice. Let's lock those in. And then Battle Master. Grappling Chain. With a hook chain and a lot of muscle, you drag your target into arm's reach. When you attack a target from behind, you leave them slowed. You know how to take the fight out of your foes. Your critical hits leave them weakened. You deal more damage against enemies that are stunned or knocked down. Okay, this is good. I'm going to go and do that. Because that complements the two-handed abilities very nicely. There you go. All right, we have a two-handed battle master in Blackwall. Sarah's going to do daggers. So we've got twin fangs. You lash out with both daggers, striking deep with bonus damage if you flank your foe. Dance of Death is regaining stamina with every kill. Parry, you quickly block a strike, then counter as their defenses fall. You leap through shadows to attack your foe with deadly strikes that hit them from behind. Your strikes cut deeper into any foe whose current health is lower than your own. Okay. Your daggers blur a dance of deadly pain. Each strike adds to your critical hit chance. After critical attack, your chain resets as you begin another dance. Uh, sneak attack, much more likely to be killing blows. If flanking, your twin fangs attack will keep your target's armor sundered from the blow. You deal more damage only if you keep your target facing forward towards the blow. Okay, they change depending on each one. Uh, before your target turns to face your blow, you move to stealth. And your flank attack leaves targets still bleeding for 10 seconds, and it stacks. Okay. We're going to grab... Can you let me do it, please? Thank you. That was weird. Wouldn't let me pick it. Uh, we'll do that. And then... I think Varric's got Archery and the Sabotage. So if we have a look with Subterfuge, we'll do Stealth. Enemies are likely to overlook you in combat, much to their regret. And they can't hit what they can't see. 10% uh, chance to activate. We'll do the dodge, the evasion. Nice, okay. Everything is there. This is kind of the usual stuff. Perfect, all right. We've leveled up our characters. All right, so we now go to the Fallow Maya. We will travel to this location, and we will take Sarah, Blackwall, and Vivian. Oh, look at these new... Uh, hang on, let me just remove move myself out of the way just for a moment, because look at these. Woo! Look at these new little icons here. I really like Blackwalls. And Sarah just looks crazy. And Vivian looks regal. That's very nice. I like those icons. All right, to the Fallow Maya. So we're like super down south. Oh. Thank you for coming. Maybe you can solve this mess. Our missing patrols are being held hostage by Avar, barbarians from the mountains. What are they doing in a bog? That's the thing. Their leader, he wants them to fight you, because you're the Herald of Andraste. She always looks like she got no arms, because it doesn't really look... Dwarven characters, they hold their arms behind their back, and they're going, look, mom, no arms. <laughs> also, loading into a new area just kills my uh, computer's frames, apparently. Makes my everything lag. What do they have against Andraste? Well, the Avar think there are gods in nature, as in, the sky has a god and the forest. The Avar say you're claiming to be sent by one, and they'll challenge the will of your god with their own. 
I think their leader's just a boastful little prick who wants to brag he killed you. Huh. Okay. Should I autograph something for him before he tries to behead me? They think readings for the weak. You know, scholars, lowlanders, or lesion peasants. Getting to our troops won't be easy. You'll have to fight your way through undead. Wait, you're not squeamish about undead, are you? They're not on the list of my favorite monsters. You'll want to stay out of the water, then. The Avar are holed up in the castle on the other side of the Fallow Mire. Make her willing, the Inquisition's people are still alive. Okay. Look at this rain. What is this? The Storm Coast? God, this game looks really good, though, doesn't it? Like, atmospherically speaking, it's a very good game, visually. This reminds me of being, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the area. My brain wants to say Black Marsh. Uh, I think that might be the name in Dragon Age Origins Awakening, where you meet Justice um, in that little sequence. It just gives me that vibe immediately. This feels so good. All right, I have a new team. It's so strange. Around, right? So weird putting, uh, oh, Jesus. So weird putting a new team together. All my regulars are back at home. No, leave me alone, requisitions officer. You just give me everything that's the, I've already done it. I don't need it anymore. I wish for a jar of bees instead. Summon a swarm of bees at the target location for 30 seconds. The swarm attacks the first enemy that comes near it for 163 damage per second for 15 seconds. A target affected by the swarm has a 10% chance every second to become panicked. What is that? That's like the atomic bomb of Thetis. Holy crap. Okay, sure. Grants a 12% bonus to armor. Not 12%, just a straight plus 12 bonus to armor for 30 seconds. Um, you know what? I'm going to put the jar of bees on here because I'll be honest with you is, um, how do I get you out of my inventory? Oh, hang on. I don't think I can because I need a, this is a potion belt. Hang on. How do I, oh, I have to drag it. Drag it. Never mind. Uh, I'm going to use this. I don't really use the lyrium potions, to be honest. It kind of refreshes pretty fast enough. Um, oh, actually, hang on. I can give different... Oh, hang on. I can give different ones to everyone. Hold on. Uh, let's give Sarah the bees. Sarah would love the bees. We'll give her the bees. I realize that I don't need that. And we'll give you some... Actually, we'll give you the rock armor. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure everyone has a has a good use of things. All right, you can have lyrium potion as well. I need to collect some more elf root. All right. That works out much better. I can't wait to uh, be Sarah and throw... A jar of bees at someone. That's got to be the first thing that we. <laughs> that's got to be the first thing that we do. All right, Fisher's End. We got some rifts, lost souls, memories of the grey. Okay, not as much to do at the moment, at least at first glance. I uh, wish to apologize to my next enemy, which is going to suffer a jar of bees. Short note. Helen, I won't be in tonight. Rupert said he had a surprise for me. He teased me by saying Lady Peasley, which he always does when he's trying to impress me by pretending he's not impressing me. Don't tell mum where I am. I've made fresh porridge in the red pot for you both of you. I'll take, I'll care for her tomorrow. I promise. Lucia. Right? Bottle of Thetis. 
Oh, 29. Garbold's backcountry reserve likely dropped to avoid seizure by authorities or because of seizure due to drinking it. Garbold only brewed from the 74th to the 92nd year of the Blessed Age, killed when the vapors in his beard spontaneously combusted. <laughs> oh my god. Before Andrastianism, Forgotten Faiths, the teachings of the Andrastian Chantry have been part of Theodosian lives. Thed Theodos Theodosian lives? For over 800 years, the Chantry guides us and teaches us. We are made humble in the knowledge that we have sinned, and yet we are inspired and given hope through Andraste's story and her song. But Andraste died almost 200 years before her Emperor Cordillus Draken established the Chantry and spread the Chant of Light. In those terrible years, Theodosians were lost, crying for salvation. They took to anyone and anything they hoped could give them the answers they so desperately sought. Some returned to well-known faiths like the Tevinta Imperium's Cult of the Old Gods, which we hold accountable for the Curse of the Blight and the Darkspawn, but others found their own paths, following false prophets and making false gods out of men. Many of these religions have disappeared, dying out with their adherents, like the Daughter of Song, or the Empty Ones. Others, like the Blades of Hesarian, may still lurk in the hidden corners of our world. This book aims to remember them, so that we may find compassion for those who lived in those dark times, and also for they who even now are lost and turn to shadow, trying to find light. Okay. Ooh. Vivian's walking through doors, that's a mage for you. Where are we going? In the opposite direction of anything. I like this stance of how you hold the daggers. I'm only playing as Sarah so I can throw a bomb on someone and I'll immediately switch back. <laughs> I thought that was a bicycle and I got really fucking confused. I was like, which timeline am I in? I'm like, have I entered a bike shop? What? In Dragon Age? <laughs> I can't wait for that to be the 10th age of Thetis. The bicycle age. The wheel age. The age of the wheel. Diary of Peter Marsh. The gardeners are too sick to save, everyone says. Grandfather and my brothers barricaded them in their own house so they wouldn't make anyone else sick. Yelled at me for watching instead of helping. Said it was for our own good. There's no more lights in the gardener's home. Rivain. Nowhere in my travels, not in the heart of the Imperium, nor the streets of Orzammar, have I felt so much an outsider as in Rivain. The chant of light never truly reached the ears of these people. The years they spent under the thumb of the Canari left most of the country zealous followers of the Kuhn. But resistant to the chant goes deeper than the Canari War. The Rivaini refuse to be parted from their seers, Wise women who are in fact hedge mages, communicating with spirits and actually allowing themselves to become possessed. The Chantry prohibition against such magical practices violates millennia of local tradition. Thought there was going to be maybe a little quest to come out of this, but apparently not. We're just going to ignore the dead body and move on with our life. God. It's it's striking so close to me. Oh shit, hang on, they're stronger. They're they're oh god, undead. I don't know if we're allowed to be here yet. Oh my god, look at them. Fuck them up. Oh hang on, jar of bees! Oh, alright. You wanna be too strong for me? Take bees! <sighs> Bees! <laughs> yeah, that's right, get bead. Chillest undead ever. Oh my god, that, that undead hit me for once! <laughs> that undead hit me once! And I lost all of my health. Can't be all of them. There must be more further in. I love that you you see the the potion hit the ground after you use it. Holy shit, that undead laid one hit on me. 
and I lost almost my entire health. Okay, the Fallow Maya might be a little too strong for us at this point. Um, we may have to uh, just continue to sit our little innocent low-leveled butts in the hinterlands as much as curiosity is pushing me elsewhere. God, it's, this is so creepy. This area makes me think of uh, Fable. How do I get in here? You, you idiots didn't build a door. That's not even a barn door. Where's the fucking door? What the fuck? They straight up forgot to build a door to the barn. That's a that's a wall. Oh, there you go. They they barricaded it. Crafty. Vivian, use your fade powers that you just did to walk through doors. All right. You win this time, Bon. There was a door after all. I thought that was a, a severe architectural mistake. Oh, this looks friendly. Hey guys, you ready? Oh. Give me back my health counter. This looks super friendly. Is that a beacon of some sort? Energize. Right. How's it end? What? The tavern tale? Come on. You left off elbow deep in circumstances. I can't be hit. That wasn't her name, but yeah, that's as far as the story ever gets. Why are you complaining? Because I can't stop thinking about it. I need to know the end. Why would you want to stop? The whole point of the good bit is thinking about the good bit. If I tell the end, it ends. Bunch of moaners, this. Drag out the sad shit, yes please, but hang on to a good bit. Oh, can't have that. Freaking duh. Okay. Energize. Look at my hands, okay. Oh god, are we under, we're under attack. Watch out. Oh, they don't like fire. Hang on, these ones aren't, these ones aren't super dangerous like the others. They don't have like the red skull, okay. I always forget that I'm about to get destroyed when that happens below my feet. Find any more beacons, we could lure the undead onto solid ground. Might be a faster fight. Keep an eye out for more then. Okay. Why are you bringing the not fire with us? Oh, look, she's in stealth. That's cool. Uh, I don't know yet. Because I guess we're following this direction. This is where the light went off in this direction. Guys, attack. Attack! Oh, I've lost my veil fire. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's another beacon. Okay, so it's just gonna go beacon. Oh, yeah, beacon. Beacon! Beacon! Weird, mysterious, uh, veil fire beacon. Oh, with a cool, hang on. Yes. Veil fire in the fallow mire. The veil fire messages in the fallow mire are largely gibberish and imply a kind of paranoia. Certain letters and numbers repeat. It is possible the writing is in code. These Veilfire runes are interspersed with numbers and mathematical notations. They evoke a clear sense of panic as if the author was trying to figure out a difficult problem. 
That's the plot of Oppenheimer right there. They were, they were trying to split the Dragon Age atom to create the Dragon Age bomb. Right. Oh shit, if I sprint, I drop the... Right. If I sprint, I drop the Olympic torch, guys. Should have known. I gotta walk this bad boy. Alright, time to run the Olympics. And there she goes, through the fallow mire. Oh god, it's another... Leave me alone! Just run past it. Oh, you bastard. I thought I already killed you. Is this going to be a constant issue? Because I think I have, I have an issue where if I just give, if I was to give the veil fire to someone else, um, they would get hit or do something and then they would just drop it. And I don't know if holding would work. I don't know if I switch away from my character, if that'll cause issues. I'll just have to let my team attack him. I guess each and every beacon will be like a save point. The veil of fire, I suppose. Oh, actually, hang on. What am I talking about? Oh, hang on. I have to... Ooh, interesting. Okay. I have to light them. Yeah. I, I was just about to say, what am I talking about? I can just energize each one like I did the first one, but it looks like you can't. You have to actually take it and light it manually. We're in a lot of trouble here. Ooh, I got to see uh, Black Hole use that move with the chain. That was cool. Apostate Widris's journal. This thick journal is half undecipherable. The parts that can be read are splattered with ink, as if the author had written them in a hurry. There were years of notes in that book. Years! Who could have taken it? Or just ciphered it? Did someone follow me from the circle? I bet it was Wernham or Clarice. Wernham or Clarice. They always were jealous little busybodies. If they saw what I've done, the demons I've harnessed, they'd be green with envy. Who's afraid of spirits now, you simpering yous? <laughs> I like how Knights of the Republic and Dragon Age use the simpering terms. But I must have my book back. I will write down the cipher again before I forget. Again. These demons are clever. I can't have them demanding a price for decrypting my own notes. The concoctions I can make with the plants here in safe amounts will open my mind to vistas past the fade. The demons hint it is beyond me because they wish to undermine me. It's so clear. It's so very clear. Okay. So you can at least take each, uh... The veil fire to each beacon, but you can't just, uh... Energize the beacons on their own. Staring at this set of unreadable runes conjures up strong feelings of bitterness and arrogance in equal measure. They fade slowly. Alright. Uh, fuck. I didn't see which direction that light went off in, but I guess we can just check the map, can't we? The map does kind of give it away, so... Oh, hang on. God, this... Okay, the, the things are starting to pop up now. Oh, I forgot to do that. Um, beacons in the dark. So the next one... The next beacon is here. We have to go through a rift to get to it. Actually, let me make this my active quest. Help, wouldn't it? Make a camp here. 
So set up camp or keep moving? Note from a scout. The paper is small and thin, meant for transport by a messenger bird. Warn the Herald her life is in danger if she comes to the mire. Nice. Our patrol spotted Avar three days ago. We didn't understand why they came down from the Frostbacks until we were captured in an ambush. Their leader said they came because they heard the Inquisition was in the area. They want to lure out and kill the Herald of Andraste to win favor with their gods. I escaped, but I can't free the others without help. I found a good camping spot for a rescue party. We'll tend to my wounds before heading off. I'm so glad that that message reached me. <laughs> Sarah really just in permanent stealth. It's great, because then we can just ignore her existence. No, that's mean. Haha. -ha. Okay, Inquisition perks plus one. Oh yeah. I think every time that happens we should go back home immediately because those are the ones that can allow us to unlock more dialogue options in relation to certain things. Um This might interest you, sir. No, you're gonna tell me to make tents. I'll no leave sign it. Of the Avar who wants to challenge me. I'll leave it for now. Or the Inquisition soldiers. They better be fine. And the ones who took them, they won't be. Oh, look, it's Stonehenge. Wait, okay, looks like we need to go through there. This bloody Stonehenge over there. The Olympic torch carrying continues. Is that a little, okay, nope, nope. Thought that was a little door. I was like looking at this being like, is that a little door? The little people? Little, little mouse people. The fact that walking through this place has like a, oh, here's the fade. It has a very creepy, like musical jingle going on in the background too, really adds to it. The Daughters of Song. Wine, music, poetry, and the wanton and frenzied indulgence of carnal fancies. These things characterize the hedonistic cult known as the Daughters of Song. Calling them an order of the faithful lends them a legitimacy they do not deserve. The daughters and sons, though they saw themselves also as daughters, celebrated Andraste's holy union with the Maker in almost every way imaginable. And it was only the holy union they venerated. Andraste's life, her war, her teachings, and her sacrifice were blithely ignored. At its height, the Daughters of Song numbered in the thousands. They maintained a stronghold in a village called Virale. Virale, in the fields of Ghislaine. Virale saw a yearly event during which the Daughters of Song paraded carven images of the Maker's glory through the square. The Daughters of Song were wiped out by the righteous forces of Emperor Draken during his campaigns to unite all of Orlais. When the Emperor's forces sacked the village, the Daughters would not arm themselves and were either killed or captured. The village was destroyed and the cult never recovered. From before Andrastianism. So we're getting Sister Rondwin's sort of perspective on all of the different sort of groups before Andrastianism. Alright guys, you want to take on that Fade Rift or, and I'll just... Oh god, what is that? Skywatcher. Ooh. Alright, I might have to drop this beacon. Because what is this? Hello? Skywatcher. So, you're Herald of Andraste. My kin want you dead, Lowlander, but it's not my job. No fears from me. Ooh. I thought the Avar wanted to fight me. Our chieftain's son wants to fight you. I'm called him when the dead pile up. Rights to the gods, mending for the bleeding, a dagger for the dying. That's what I do. I don't pick up a blade for a whelp's trophy hunt. Why aren't you with the other of all? Trying to figure out this hole in the world. Never seen anything like it's like. They spit out angry spirits. Endless. What the sky's trying to tell us? I don't know. They're caused by the breach in the sky. It was some kind of magic gone wrong. 
I know that, Lowlander. I'm talking about the Lady of the Skies. Do you not know her? Can't you see the warning she writes through the bird flocks in the air? Preposterous superstition. Preposterous is what you wore to a bog, Orlesian. <laughs> I like that the group can chime in. Hello, Sarah. The other of our kidnapped an Inquisition patrol. Are they all right? A few were injured in the skirmish, but they were alive. Last I saw them. Someone's trained them well. They killed more of us than I thought they would. Farewell, then. Watch the water. All right. Uh, you want to see me do a cool magic trick? You going to help out? He's helping out. Hell yeah. Nope, he's running away. <laughs> I thought he was going to help out. He ran away. That's so funny. He, he pulled his weapon out and everything. That is, that is hilarious. He's like, I'll just be over here. <laughs> I'll just wait. Oh god, hang on. That's not good for fire. Hang on. Ah! We don't have any frost attacks. I've got Vivian with me. Um, shit. Well, fuck. I guess we'll figure, we'll just figure it out. Don't use fire damage. It looks like I can do standard fire attacks though. Okay. Standard fire attacks seem fine. How's that, Sky Watcher? Boom. He coming, he's coming back. He's coming back after that. You can mend the gaps in the air. There's a reason people have been following our Herald. Maybe you do have a God's favor. Hi. Okay. Farewell then. Watch the water. At least there was some dialogue. Um talking about it oh you just pick it back up again when it drops what the fuck i didn't know that i thought you could just i thought you had to go back to the start oh that's mighty convenient then let me just put it on my belt or something jesus ah, that's good to know i didn't have to go all the way back um all right next beacon Look, signs of a plague. I'd guess that the afflicted never made it far enough to spread the disease past this bog. It's fortunate. Waterborne diseases are often painful. Guys, it, oh, it's the it's their tactics. I think their tactics, they're more inclined to attack my target. If I don't have a target, they're just going to fucking stand there. I'm carrying the Olympic torch, guys. You have to bear with me. My. Yeah. Careful. Disturbing the water draws them out. Spooky. there two this time they go in different wait they go in two different directions oh hang on oh because that's the beacons in the dark thing oh vivian's getting fucked up die die these particular veil fire rune veil fire runes are completely impenetrable but staring at them brings about the mental image of some kind of plant and the impression it is somehow important then it fades all right where's vivian at getting killed somewhere. Can, we, can I have a regroup, please? Is there a regroup option? It's just hold position. Maybe if I just pick attack my target. Help Vivian! She's getting ganged up on hardcore right now. I'm trying, lady. 
<laughs> I don't have a barrier, sorry. Oh my god. You're taking all of my potions, guys. Oh, sorry. She's dead. We're in trouble. Oh god, there's there's genuinely a lot more here than I'm used to. Wait, why can't I? That's right, guys, we can do it. The power of te teamwork. 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 They're so they're so strong, but they don't have this the skull mark. Come on, so unfair. We've, we've got this, we've got this. Easy. You can like, I don't know what I, you can like check their bodies when they're down. I don't know if I just picked her back up again. Or whether she got up at the end of um, combat. But I need to look at that, because that's weird. I'm like, why can I look at their bodies? Alright, we've got a level up. Does leveling up restore your health like it used to? I'm going to say probably. I'll assume probably not. We're going to do Unforgiving Chain for Sarah. Uh, black wall. Grappling chain now pulls in all enemies near your target. Chains for days. Okay. Interesting. You dive and roll to where the battle needs you to be. Horns of Valor. Your war horns blast rings across the battlefield. Oh, giving allies strength? Yes. That's a good one. That's supportive of you. Um, Vivian. Vivian's getting messed up. The more magical energy you expend, the more damage your spells do. That's fine. We're just a little low on health today, team. Um, I might take us back to the camp. We'll restock. And then we'll run through again. <laughs> Let's replenish our potions. This area is a little strong. Oh yeah, my jar of bees. And also, I need to remember that Blackwall's got this armor as well. Alright, that's replenished. You can travel to these beacons, which is also super helpful. That's useful. All right, we're back. Does that restart my talk? Yeah, it does. That's fine, because I can just pick up a new one. Blue vitriol, that's new. Now, it looks like beacons in the dark thing. Oh god. Yeah, okay. Go off this way. Landmark and a fade rift. The undead are definitely pretty intimidating. Look at us mages go. Doing great from a distance. Oh, never mind. Um, Sarah is being kind of like useless. Hey Sarah, would you like to do something? Wait, what is that? What is that? 
just oh a despair demon what the fuck excuse me can you do something please go and do something will you what are you doing what the fuck Sarah won't do anything <laughs> The fuck? There we go. She's gone into stealth. She's doing stuff again. A despair demon. This is this is cool. I'm dead. Oh god. Okay, this is bad. Now what happens here? Oh, wait. You hold it down? Oh, what the fuck? You can pick your people back up again without a revival spell. Blackwell's dead, babe. I just decided to get annihilated by a whole fucking party of uh, despair demons. Quick, disrupt the rift. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. I'm being bullied. Oh, man. Oh, my, oh my god. I'm being laser beamed. This is fucked. Wait! Revenants as well? Oh god, they're level 12! Get me out of here! <laughs> Bye, Sarah, I'm leaving! Ah! Oh my god! Okay, I can't do that fade rift. Holy shit. Is everyone okay? Because I'm not. That was fucking messed up. Alright, we're gonna have to come back there later. Let's go back to the camp again. <laughs> Back to the camp. Oh wow, we've replenished our potions. Lovely. All right, this place is definitely tough. Fallow Maya is uh, is definitely a butt kicking experience. Let's at least see if we can do this next beacon. Um, and then we might have to come back here later. We've like I said, we've dipped our toes into a new area. Wait, can I do this? Okay. I can still hold on to the torch. Wonderful. The Olympic torch runner is going crazy right now. And we've got the crying statues. Oh, God. Hey, guys. No, hold on. I'm... Oh, don't. Ah, you made me drop my fucking torch, you bastard. You've interrupted the Olympic relay. Everybody's watching. Don't you understand? The 941... Olympics, you bastards. Okay. The lost city of Barandur. On the 15th day of my journey across the Tevinter Imperium, our caravan reached a great rolling plain. Swaying grass hid flocks of birds so vast that when they took flight, their numbers blocked the sun. This, our guide informed us, was the great city of Barandur wonder of the ancient world, famed for its fountains which were said to grant eternal youth. Legend has it that during the celebration of the winter solstice, Carinatus, High King of Barandur, turned away an envoy from the High Priest of Dumat. The priest called upon his god to punish Carinatus for the offence, and the dragon god of silence answered him. Uh, Dumat, as we recall, I believe was one of the Archdemons, I believe. Months passed, the kingdom of Barandur fell silent. In distant Minrathus, the priests of Razakale dreamed of dark omens. Their oracles declared that a dire fate had befallen King Carin uh, Carinatus. Finally, the fearful High King of Minrathus sent a company of soldiers to Barandur. The men reported that the road which led across the northern plains ended abruptly. They walked for leagues over barren, empty rock where the kingdom of Barandur had once been. All of it swept from the face of the world by the hand of a god. Not a single stone of Barandur remains, and nothing of the once powerful city has ever been found. A secret now that can never be told. Damn. I like that the In Pursuit of Knowledge um, from Brother Genitivi is still, still going. Still getting new knowledge from Genitivi. Barandur. That's one of my favorite uh, fantasy convention like naming styles is the the D-U-R on the end of 
fantasy names, just the way that it's said. And I think it's in The Hobbit or something where the way that they refer to a place called Dol Guldur. I don't know, it just always makes me think of uh, Lord of the Rings. Dol Guldur. Oh god, don't... Don't touch me. Run! I've disturbed the water with disturbing the spirits. Quick. Oh my god. Oh no! Oh, quite a smell. Oh, they're all slimy. God damn it. God damn it. Don't do it, guys. Ah, you bastards. Alright. We've got a whole army of undead here to deal with. Oh. Vivian is getting brutalized, man. So am I. So am I. Madame Vivian! What the fuck? I'm all the way over there. Vivian, can you do better, please? I'm getting sniped. I need, I need solace. Solace knows what he's doing. Now, where's my, uh, where's my torch that I dropped? Dropped it like here. Where is it? Wait, that's going to some, that's going to something else. I, think I dropped my torch, and it's gone. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm blaming Vivian for that. Alright, I'll go and get my torch back. This is such a journey, guys. Oh god. Stop disturbing the water, will you? Alright. There's not much I can do about that. This is the most tragic one yet to have to come back to because it's such a journey. Alright, if my veil fire can stay on the ground if I drop it this time. If only I could slot this one into my staff. massive this moon is, by the way. How close is this moon to this planet? Massive. As much as it would completely mess up our oceans and gravitational forces, why are you back? As much as it would completely mess up our gravity and oceans and everything, I fucking wish that we could have um, the moon be closer. No, pick this, pick it up, 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 pick it up. Why can't you pick it up? I hate this. Why are these enemies um, coming back to life? Why must they insist on making my life living hell? Oh my god, who's disturbing the undead? Oh, you're also getting poisoned. I'm keeping my eyes on this fucking torch. <laughs> I pick this up, please. Thank you. All right, the journey continues. Where's this beacon? There it is. I can taste it. Creepy windmills. We're doing it. We're doing it. It is done. 
Veilfire and the Fallowmire. These unreadable runes evoke for a moment a sudden and overpowering feeling of smug and vengeful triumph, as though a difficult problem has been solved. There is the image of a bottled elixir, then it fades. A cipher written in the last pages of Apostate Widras's journal corresponds to the Veilfire writing found in the Fallowmire. The deciphered messages are notes that, when taken together, form instructions on how to concoct a particularly dangerous poison. Nice. All of that for a, a poison. Hell yeah. Alright, drop this shit on the ground. I don't need it anymore. Uh, let's fend off these demons. I love that even if I move away from them, it still gets me. I love that. I love that a lot. I love that so much. I love that tremendous amounts. Leave me alone. No. Fuck. No. No. This is the worst. If Solus were here, was here, nothing would be going wrong. His barrier would be better. Maybe I just... I, did, I need every character to have barrier, I think. I think on my next level, I'm going to give uh, Maple Last barrier as well. That would be a good idea. That'd be a very good idea. I'm trying to help Vivian? She's always in trouble. It's a waste of resources. We have a path free of corpses back to the shore. Sound strategy. Nice. We did it. All right. I've done some done some beaconing. Um, and then where are we? We can keep going. Lost souls, which is what we need to do. And then going through to Memories of the Grey. Then there was something secret over here. So we're going to go back this way. This has definitely been our most challenging area to traverse so far. But like, at least in a way that doesn't result in instant death. Until we go and fuck up those desire, de desire demons? No, not desire demons. What are they called? Despair Demons? Which reminds me, we have Codex Entries. Corpse? Oh my god, the, the screaming... Uh, what is it? The, the Screaming Man painting is all I can think of when I see that. In most corners of Thetis, funeral rites include burning or dismembering the dead to prevent them from becoming host to demons, but not everyone gets a proper burial. It is not unheard of for the dead to be thrown in mass graves in the aftermath of a battle or execution, almost asking some demon to claim the corpses. A despair demon. This is new, right? Because we've had desire, pride, and... Sloth. Rage demons. I don't remember ever coming across a despair demon before. I think this is new. Once upon a time, we classified these oh, as demons of sloth. <laughs> but we learned that despair demons are something quite different. They are not the anti antithesis of justice or valor, but rather of hope. They form nightmares, tearing away the foundations of self and purpose. When brought into the world, they are most attracted to places the downtrodden populate. Alienages, slums, prisons, and the like. The miasma they spread can lead to extreme behavior. We look for a rash of unexplained suicides, men and women so filled with grief they lash out. The most intelligent of these creatures are to be feared, for they not only feed on despair, they understand its causes and seek to bring it, bring it about. From the shadows they ruin lives, drinking the tears of those who have no idea the cause of their misery is not random chance. That is such an incredibly written description of a despair demon. That's great. And this is... I'll take this moment to highlight something that I really love about Dragon Age. Something that is cool. That 
I feel that I've, I don't think I've experienced this in any other game uh, or any other sort of like series uh, is how Dragon Age handles its codex and it's like lore and world building is it's all a matter of perspective. Um, a lot of games have, they have their codexes, they have their like all of their stuff and it's very matter of fact. It's like, this is how it is. This is how they behave. This is how they are. This is how everything is. It is just crystal clear information. And something that is really cool about Dragon Age, and it's done this since the beginning, is everything is like from the description of this person, from the perspective of this person, this person's specific experience. And it always, and it shows you like a source of like Brother Genitivi's travels or like Sisters of the Chantry and all that kind of stuff. And then what's really great is you can get in future games or sometimes even the same game, different codex entries from different groups, giving their perspective on things. And it feels so much more real in that sense, because that is what real life is like in terms of people having different experiences or different perspectives on certain things. And I like that it allows for retcons or it wiggle room to update information, right? So you can have things that it's like, oh, once upon a time, these were sloth demons, but then upon further research or like different groups observing them, we were like, there's actually subclasses to these demons, you know? and other feelings that can be associated with them. And it's the same thing that like with that conversation we had with Solus earlier, where he was talking about spirits and demons and what they actually end up being um, is a reflection of the person that interacts with them. Uh, doesn't feel like a retcon in a sense of the word. It lines up with some things that we've experienced um, and it feels great to actually get more like perspectives or different clarification on, on things. It, it allows the lore of this game a lot of freedom to change and shift if it needs to without things being so rigid and, um, black and white. Uh, this game or this series can allow you to view things in a very black and white manner and then like you'll play another game and it goes but what about this and it, and it gets you thinking and i think that that's really good i think that that is really good that's all i have to say about that it's probably that's why i am fascinated with the lore of this game and i think that dragon age has the best codex out of any game with any codex I've ever read or experienced, I think Dragon Age has just consistently been on top. And it just continues to get better. The Avars, driven across the Frostbacks in ancient times, the Alamari tribesmen split into three groups. One settled the Froden Valley, one was pushed into the Korkari Wilds, and the last returned to the mountains. Modern Ferelden's bear little resemblance to their Alamari ancestors, and the chastened remember few of their traditions, but the Avar have changed little throughout the years. Like the chastened, the Avar are not a united people. Each tribe fends for itself and is beholden only to its thane. They still follow their own gods, Korth the Mountain Father, Harkon Winter's Breath, the Lady of the Skies, as well as dozens of animal gods never named to outsiders. Nothing lasts in the mountains. Wind and rain eventually eat away the strongest holds. Valleys that were arable one generation are locked in year round ice the next. Game is constantly on the move. Even among themselves, the Avar make no absolute promises. They wed by a tradition in which the groom struggles to untie a tightly knotted rope while the bride sings a hymn to one of the gods. However many knots he is undone by the time her song ends is the number of years she will spend with him. Lowlanders often forget that there is no such thing as a permanent alliance in the Frostbacks. From Ferelden, Folklore and History by Sister Patrine. There you go. Good, st good stuff. Jolly good. And yeah, the reason why I um, will read anything and everything that gets sent to me in this game is because... Codex and the world building is gourmet. 
it's gourmet lore, and I'd be feasting. And then I, I love being able to talk about it, uh, share my thoughts on it, and then to get, you know, everyone else's thoughts on it as well, in a non-spoiler way, of course. Because my favorite thing to do is also, like, be able to, like, theorize and put rhetorical questions out into the fade to be like, wow, I wonder what this means and what that means. Not necessarily seeking confirmation or answers, because a lot of the time the game will do that for you at the appropriate points, but more just like sharing my thoughts and perspective on how I'm viewing things uh, right now. You do get a lot of uh, excitable people sometimes that just love to go and word vomit and spoil things that they don't need to because the game will just tell me anyway. Um, and to those people, you need to learn more self-control. Because would you prefer me to like have a genuine reaction to something as I experience it in the game? Or would you rather tell me in a boring little YouTube comment and then I have to go, oh yeah, sorry guys, I got this spoiled for me. <laughs> in a YouTube comment, nobody likes that, you know? So just think carefully about what you want to talk about. I have to avoid the comment section for this game almost entirely um, because of that. And I wish that I didn't have to, you know? But my integrity of a blind playthrough and avoiding spoilers is much more important because I really get sad when I've had things spoiled in the past and it ruins the experience not just for me but for other respectful viewers. So when we're talking about lore, when we're talking about theories and, and questions and stuff, just remember that the questions are rhetorical. I'm not seeking an answer outside of the game. And I don't want to be spoiled on things. And I'll take this opportunity to say thank you to my lovely, diligent mods who are doing a great job at making sure I go unspoiled as well. And it's not an exaggeration to literally... Not an exaggeration. Head for the castle. God damn, look at this area. It's not an exaggeration to say hundreds upon hundreds of spoilers are removed every single time an episode goes up. So, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, this is, this area is ridiculous. Look at this castle with these big ass chains. And they use, they've got an undead, goddamn, castle, yeah? undead moat of enemies. I'm gonna fuck them up. I want, I want the experience. Mess them up. Get him. Time for the castle, yeah? No, Sarah. We're doing stuff. Oh god, there's more. Oh. <laughs> Black Wall's little chain move. Oh man. Why are they wasting time? Why did they dress him up? Head toward the castle. Tell me what to do, game. I'm getting experience points. Oh my god, is there actually an unlimited amount of them? If there is, this is a great place for experience. We're wasting time. Head toward the castle. <laughs> okay, they really want me to go to the castle. <laughs> they don't want me to do it. It's, it's going just fine, sir. See, look! We defeated them all! We're wasting time! Head toward the castle! Don't tell me what- I am your herald! Listen to me! <laughs> we fight! Or we die! It was fine! You, you guys are being- You guys are the worst! I'm gonna get back my original party. They never complained. They love me. Um... They also, these, these, these fellas, these lasses and lads have not really had much to say to each other. Um, I'm wondering if the party banter will trigger more if I just sit on my ass and I don't do anything, you know? Because they, they haven't, they haven't really talked to each other. 
And I definitely do have the party banter, uh, the increased party banter mod installed, which I think with that in mind is, is crazy that the amount that they talk to each other has been increased and it still isn't that much. <laughs> Like the uh, Blackwall has said one thing to Sarah so far about asking the continuous story that we haven't even heard the start of. Um, I forgot that we were supposed to be checking out this question mark here before we head into this castle. Oh wait, you don't even have to travel back to a camp to replenish your potions. You can just travel to beacons. You can just travel to points on the map. Oh, I thought you had to go back to a camp. Okay. The more you know. The more you know. Alright, let's go check out this, um... Whatever's going on over here. Before we head into the castle. Oh. Die! Okay. Die! Disturb the water. Do it. I dare you. Ooh, you poison arrows, you bastards. Just don't disturb the Avar, please. Alright, hang on. What am I looking for over here? Cabin key? Look the cabin door, cabin fever. Okay. I'm grateful that there are secrets like that that it, uh, we can at least search for. We seem to have some sort of sense to it. Good. Get the hippo. Get the Dragon Age hippo. Bog fisher. A bog fisher. <laughs> I accompanied Marquis uh, de Archambon upon this expedition reluctantly, although de Archambon insisted that an exploration to show me the truth and beauty of the world might ass assuage the consternation with which I observed it. As we entered the caves, the cold and brackish water dripping incessantly, we came upon a hulking beast whose great flapping paws slapped the stone. In countenance it was broad, its flaps of hide hanging loose across its bristled back. De Archambon drove it away, laughing at its clumsiness, heedless of the delicate fangs protruding at unknown angles from its distended maw. He said the beast, or bogfisher as the locals called it, was a failing vestige in the land of men, fit to be tamed or slain. That night, we camped bedside an underground lank, uh, lake, its rippling waves, a, sur a susurrus of inhuman whispers. I'm reading so many brand new words today. The, sepul the sepulchral emptiness of the starless night was vast, our own fire pitiful in its sullen rebellion against the unending dark. The bog fisher slipped from the lake, its flapping paws perfectly equipped to propel it through water, its spiny maw closed upon Diashambon. Then the Marquis was gone, his frantic thrashing, all we could see in the frenzied white water as the bog fisher pulled him under. That night, I knew this is not the land of men. The lightless, torpid waters are not tamed. Men are but ants crawling witlessly across a lily pad in a pond. Most think the emerald land bound to their tiny will. Those few who peer over the edge and see the leviathans, pale-bellied, scales shimmering in colours with no name, swimming beneath them, can only scurry away, trying in vain to articulate the vast and uncaring terror that awaits. What my eyes have seen, my limited mind may never comprehend, but I shall never draw near dark water again. The bog fisher has taught me well. From an anatomy of various terrible beasts by Baron Havard Pierre d'Amortizan. The bogfisher likes hiding in dark places and water. Master does not like baths. Footnote in the margins of the manuscript by the Baron's scribe Dunwich. All right. Perfect. So we've got um, Newt Scamander and his fantastic beasts in Dragon Age. All right. Cabin fever. 
Hello? Quest completed. Angry spirit. Help Vivian, the only thing that we keep saying. That's the best ability I got, that goddamn um, flash fire. Flash fire does all my damage for me. Waterlogged diary. A diary found in the Fallow Mire. One water-soaked entry dated 10 days ago is still legible. The damned roof leaks. I've been eating boiled roots for a week. I'm squatting in a bog no one's so much as spit in for 10 years. Still better than the alienage, thank Andraste. That's the last time I visit the city for a while. I'm worried about the gardeners. They weren't sick when I left, and now they're all down with a fever, and their little boy is at death's door. Nigel Marsh said we should lock them in their home, the sour codger. Maybe I can bring something to help. Is it death root that cures a fever or health root? It can't be death root. Can it? Ask Ira, which is right. Okay. We got some lore. All right, we'll head back down into this castle area. Let us go back. Let's see what awaits us. The silhouette of the castle under the moon is so nice. Down you go. Grave keep. Alright. Well, straight into combat we go. Whoa! That was a bit of a fast shield rush there, sir. My god. My god. Lost souls, memories of the, ah, memories of the gray, that's what that was, okay. Big chest. Not big loot. Nice, supplies replenished. Ah, oh, Sarah. Please. Oh no! Requires perk, deft hands, fine tools. Wait a minute, is that an Inquisition perk? Um... Wait a minute, hold on a second. That's not a... Is that a... that's not one of these. Hold on a minute. Um, going back to Haven. We are going back to Haven. Oh, um, is that an Inquisition perk? We do have a perk to unlock. I was trying to focus on dialogue options, but it seems there might be a lock picking one. Take me back to Haven real quick. I guess we can check on some reports when we're ready. Yeah, to do this massive run back into this place every time. I can't teleport directly in here. I demand to see the Inquisition perks. Okay. 
Show me what we got. Okay, Inquisition perks. Forces, secrets, connections, Inquisition. Did you see the message I sent? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Ah. Oh my god, no! You need four points in the category? Oh, that's awful. Allows all rogues in the party to open masterwork locks. The training gear and experience working with master locksmiths need to tackle the toughest and most ingenious locking mechanisms. Oh, that's so annoying. So I need to, like, focus on... Okay, well, hang on. We've got one in this category here automatically. We've got another one here. Ugh. 50% XP for each foe studied. Collection of tier one. No, they all, that all sucks. Oh, damn. That's unfortunate. With access to a forward training camp, the Inquisition scouts can receive training to cover a wider area and identify items of interest to the Inquisitor. It reveals additional landmarks and points of interest on the maps of every area. Capture any keep. Ugh. Well, I can't even... Yeah, I can't acquire that. Um... That sucks. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, hang on. If we, well, with these, hmm. It's th two in this one. So if we do some Leliana based things, maybe can get some more points in the category. We sent Leliana on one of these missions. Maybe she'll get another point. Red Jenny, Mischief Not Malevolence. The servants involved were dismissed, and we've a minor reward for the effort. 100 gold. Nightingale, 100 shadows to chase, heading to Lake uh, Celest Celestine. The nobility says it's lovely this time of year. 30 influence, okay. And I was correct. Spreading word that the Inquisition was allied with the Grey Wardens meant messages of support poured in. With the treaties in hand, we've managed to secure new recruits and donations of both gold and equipment. Commander will make good use of them. We've got some griffin robes. That's cool. Okay. That's all completed. Ow. I'm so sorry that I keep rubbing my eye. I, you start rubbing your eye once and then it just... and then you're stuck. The Secrets of Andraste. The runes discovered in that mountain passage during the recent search are of a type never seen before, neither Tevinter nor Elven, and perhaps dating back to the time of Andraste herself. There are few who might be able to translate the script, and the benefit of doing so is unknown. We have agents with magical knowledge and the means to acquire texts. Let us work on this ourselves. And I know of several Antivan scholars who can be discreet. Ah, uh, let's do it ourselves. Let's see what we have. We'll send Leliana to do that one. Perfect. All right. Um, in regards to the Inquisition perks, yeah, we're gonna have to wait. That annoys me. That annoys me greatly, in fact. All right, so we've got inventory capacity. I can go for another inventory upgrade. I kind of want to get my history, so we're going to do history. More options related to history in the Chantry. We are not unlocking that door for the Grey Warden um, secrets at this time, unfortunately. We can use that. If you find anything, please bring it in. What? Ah, oh. Sarah slightly disapproves as to something we did with the uh, Red Jenny mission, I think. Please that makes tell sense. Me if you find something. I don't care about Sarah's disapproval. All right, um, Griffin robes, though. Ooh, look at that. That's perfect for a mage to wear. <laughs> but it's mage only. What the fuck? Goddamn battle mage. Look at the armor on that. I look bulky. Um, that's funny. Okay. Well, I'd be a fool to not equip it. 
the extra strength is great. That's perfect for me, a mage. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay. It is what it is, I suppose. Okay. Uh, the reinforced scout coat. We can't even use it yet because we need to be level 11. Alright, got an armor change now. There you go. Goddamn battle mage. Alright, back out to the fallow Maya. And then I guess we'll go. Yeah. Um. We're gonna mix it up again. Let's have Varric instead of Sarah. Because they haven't really spoken to each other at all. We'll have Vivian and Blackwall. I'd like to see if Varric will talk to these characters, maybe. That would be nice. At least we can interact with uh, this here. The gate has been opened. Hey, Varric man, you got this right. You can open it. You're a good guy. <laughs> We just bash the door down, dude. Like, honestly. Hey, Blackthorn, just fucking attack it. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? No. It's got a tough lock on it. And that lo lock improves the integrity of the door. So it cannot be smashed. The fog. <laughs> They're all just sat down, dude. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Or just sitting down, not expecting to get burnt to a crisp. You guys did look a bit chilly, so I helped you out a little bit. Hook him ever so slightly. fella. All my spells. You can't even respect the 1v1. You need friends, huh? Well, I mean, I've got friends too, so, I mean, sure. It's not really a 1v1, is it? Ow! Oh my, oh. You've got more than three friends, though, so... Alright, there we go. Alright. Get him. What is that ringing in my ear? What is that barrier, dude? Okay, that barrier didn't last too long this time. That's good. He's panicked. He's panicked. Yeah. 
him. Well, you did good, son. You tried. Gift of the Mountain Father. Hello, Farrick, darling. I read your hard in high town. You did? Seriously? Most of the Imperial Court did. It was in fashion a few winters ago. <laughs> Just how much gold is my publisher stealing from me? <laughs> That's great. I read Hard in High Town. Perfect. Oh, dude. Gift of the Mountain Father. Hello. New axe for Blackwall. You want to call him uh, Blackthorn because I'm playing um, Final Fantasy 16 at the moment. He's a character of the same name. God damn. Why did I even bother crafting it? Look at this. Hello. Korth, the Mountain Father, brought his people to the mountains at the dawn of time, carving out caves for shelter and bringing them game to survive on. He told them, remain in the mountains. They will grant you all you need. Accordingly, Avar, who leave the Frostbacks, carry a blade made from ore mined there. Nice. Okay, Varric, level up for you, sir. Um, let us... You. Full draw. It takes a moment to line up the perfect shot, but it pays off with a devastating hit that bites even deeper against enemies who aren't injured yet. 800 weapon damage and 800% at full health. Damn. So you can use Varric to get like the first shot on an enemy from a distance before um, combat begins. Grey Warden Banner. Excellent. He greatly approves. We can't get the other one though because it's behind a silly little door. So the prisoners are behind that door. And we have the key. Let's release them. Hello. Herald of Andraste. I've dealt with the Avar. Is everyone all right? Yes, Your Worship. The injured need some rest, but we can return on our own. I can't believe the Herald came for us. I told you she'd come. Nice. We got some arms and legs. We've reached level nine. Whoop. I think I'm going to put my first point in spirit. Give myself a barrier. So I can do that too. Oh, it's the person. Skywatcher. Hello. Your god looks after you, Herald. There lies the brat. His father, chief of our holding, would duel me for the loss if he cared enough. Ooh. The Avar would join the Inquisition. As an agent or as like a companion? The Inquisition has a purpose your chief lacks. Join me. Help us stop the breach. Is this why the Lady of the Skies let me here? To help heal the wounds in her skin? Aye, right, I'll join you. Let me make peace with my kid and I'll find where you set your flag. Oh, it's an agent. Cool. Because it's doing the cutscene thing. Agent! Agent acquired, there it is. All right. And here comes my staff, appearing out of nowhere. Lovely, okay, there you go. We've, we guess we've got to come back to that. Um, and it seems that we do have some stuff we can do that, but this is mighty dangerous. We'd be getting our butts kicked if we do this one. Um, I wonder if I bring just three mages and just have Solus, Vivian, and me with barriers, we might actually be able to do it. Um, we'll try that out. So let's go to Fisher's End so I can do this uh, landmark. I'll change my party. All right, ready for this arrangement? We'll see what works. We're going to have Vivian. We're going to have Solus. We'll do three mages. And then we're going to have 
Varric could do his perfect shot from a distance, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring Cassandra. All right. I'm gonna have this arrangement instead. And then Cass and Solus need points applied to them. So there's a revival spell, but you can pick enemies up off the ground by like holding down, which is kind of crazy. That's weird. Um, so you summon spirits to heal fallen allies in the area back on their feet and fighting again. They protect your allies, reducing incoming damage and reviving them if they fall unconscious or if they're picked up and uh, killed, like picked off immediately. Revival is easier to cast, but doesn't revive them permanently. Oh yeah, that's the weird one. Just like makes them weird zombies. <laughs> um, I'm going to do Guardian Spirit there. And Cass. Let's give you... Ah, oh, protect you from ranged attacks, especially because we're going up against these despair demons that attack from the front. Um, and that should be good. All right. Let's check out this landmark down here, and then we'll travel. Fallow Mire is a cool area. See, probably this, I think the smallest area that we've explored so far, I think. Which, uh, it's kind of nice. Oh, you can do it. Come on. No, you can't. Okay. I had faith in you. You guys okay? Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck is... Jesus. Why are we... Wait. Why are we being attacked in the camp? Sheesh. Thought it was safe here. It was not safe here. The Light of Andraste. There is a wind-weathered inscription on the statue, commissioned in the 55th year of the Storm Age by the illustrious Ban Hargrave, protector of the Fallow Maya, to commemorate the completion of her keep and to thank Blessed Andraste for her good fortune. Yeah. Alright, we're going to take on... Try to take on this Fade Rift. See if we can get this done. This is the last thing in this area uh, at the moment. Is there's still another two landmarks that we haven't found, so maybe we there's a pathway somewhere. But this is our second landmark in here. Alright, can we do it? Go Cassandra, we'll be helping you out from the back here. Just from the back, over here, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Harry Potter! Where we're all just flinging our sticks. Let's go! Fling those sticks. Alright. Ready yourself, Cass! Oh, hang on. Wait, what? Oh. Cassandra, you're fine. Cassandra, you're fine. Promise. Oh yeah, there's Revenant too. That Revenant's going down pretty decent. Solus is just going right in. Alright, I think we're getting it this time. There you go, we're getting it this time. We got overwhelmed the first time. You just needed three mages. Change the party setup, baby. Look at that. Get... Get dunked on. Get dunked on! See, I told you, if we had Solus, nothing goes wrong. He's so much better. Nice. Rifts in the Maya completed. Doomed. The den. The stench of wet fur is so strong it almost masks the pungent odors of the Maya. Almost. Revenant helmet and revenant heart, eh? 
Cool. There you go. Um, when you want something done, take a squad of mages in. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. I think that's everything that we... Oh, hang on. Oh, no, wait. There was this journal. Wait, 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 wait. The Widrus's journal? Oh, through here. Oh. Where are my people at? Oh, there we go. Behind me. I'll just, I'll just fight that on my own, shall I, everyone? Ugh. So, a journal recovered in the mire suggests a rather unstable apostate is roaming about somewhere. The apostate, apparently named Widra, seems to be mixed up with some demons and could be dangerous. Uh, are we going the right way? Just disturbing the water, so I'm just summoning undead. That's great. The, the mage roaming death squad, though. There's a camp. Notes on the stars. The blocky writing of this note looks shaky. Wilton, watching the sky when I heard screams from the old castle, went to the gate and saw horned figures in the mist. Tell everyone who hasn't got the plague to go. Meet me on the south path. I have a cousin in King's Crossing we can stay with. Gein. Notes on the stars, a collection of quickly jotted notes written in a blocky hand. Moon rose a few minutes later today than it did a week ago. I don't think it moves like stars do. Is it because it's closer? Wilton pointed out another star in the south quarter of the sky by one of the Tevinter constellations. Real faint. Boy has good eyes. Have him help me spot next week. Notes in book I found not a chart of the air as I thought. Looks like different sky. Stars different in the north than they are here. That's cool. I like seeing like these messages about um, learning of like the movement of the stars in Dragon Age. That's cool. Um, it looks like we're out of the reach of this. But I thought that it might. Hmm. Okay. Guess we'll head back. Maybe if I make it my active quest. Oh, there's ah, oh, there's multiple pathways to venture out to. Okay, hold on. Go out to the same area down there. Hidden Apostate's camp. Okay, we have to go through here. I'm out of range. I'm out of range. ignore that Solus um, took damage. Oh. Solus needs help! Nope. I said we'll ignore that. Solus is the best. It's my strongest. He's not... He's fine. Can you guys come to me, please? Here's my regroup button. Come, come over to me, please. Why is it taking you guys so long? The veil is thin here. Come on, guys. This way, please. Come on. You got an apostate major here to do with. Are we now? Okay, kill Widrus. Oh my god. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, 
Cassandra, you you're good? Feel free to cast a potion on yourself at any time, because I believe you should be able to. Got an artifact with him. It's a good thing we brought Solus after all. Eat flame. Nice. Oh, he got back up again. What the fuck? There you go. Warden Battle Mage armor, cool. Got some cool cool loot here. Um reinforced Vanguard mail for a warrior. Level 12. We're getting a lot of stuff that's just above us at the moment. Um plus 11 health mage only. We can give that to someone else. Oh, I really like how that looks though. Oh, that looks so good. Look at that shoulder pauldron. I don't want anyone to have this but me, but it's weaker than my griffin robes. Only by a little bit. I lose out on my staff. Well, interestingly enough, even though this is a purple item, it doesn't have like an item description. This is just... F mm -mm. All right, style points. I need that because that looks fucking cool. That's mine. Someone else can have the other thing. <laughs> Someone else can have it. Because holy shit, I want to look cool. I want to look cool. Twin fangs, ability damage by 30 for a rogue only. Okay. Spellburst staff. I need to be level 10, damn it. I'll get you yet. Just have to wait. Cool. All right, uh, Solus, let's get you out of the yellow. <laughs> let's get you out of the Supreme Leader Snoke. Get up. I guess I'll give you that. There you go. Um, sure. Sure. Uh, Vivian, would you like to have I like that little collar. It's fancy. The yellow on this looks nice. Um, we'll give you the superior enchanter coat. Perfect. Every, everyone's happy. I look great. That is such a cool piece. Excellent. The wards are functioning again. Okay. Solus is the only one who cares about those, so whenever we get one of those, we need to remember to have Solus with us. We level 11 for that one. Walesian Battle Mage Armor. Human Mages only level 10. Okay. Be nice if I could see what it looks like, even though you're not allowed to equip it yet, like just to get a preview. But it looks like that'll be for Vivian. Solus slightly approves. Okay. Nice. Now that doesn't conclude our exploration of the Fallow Maya because apparently there's a couple of landmarks uh, still left. But we'll be getting those next time. Um, that was a brief little Fallow Maya adventure which was pretty cool. Uh, we're going to head back to Haven and bring this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been great. It's been a lot of fun. I'm really liking mixing up our party arrangements now for certain activities. Um, and we haven't been able to get a lot of banter from our people out in the field. Um, but I guess we can look into that and see if that is maybe an issue even with the the mod i don't know but they're, they're just not talking to each other that much 
very, very happy with my new outfit. That's great. I just love coming across some really well-designed uh, armor pieces. And this game has a lot of them, which is nice. I'm sure I'll find something else that'll tickle my fancy too. But as soon as I saw that, I'm like, that's not going on a companion. That's, that's for me. <laughs> that's mine. I'm sure it would look fine on someone else, but it looks perfect on me. Let's drop the Revenant helmet in. And we have a new activity, so we'll wrap up this episode with another operation. Um, where is that operation? There it is. Have you kept in touch with our friends in Lady Esterly's estate? Several bards will play for her tomorrow night. We will have names soon enough. Okay. An offer from the Blades of Asarian. Your Worship! The Blades of Osarian keep supplies along the shore. Consider them at your disposal. Our former leader increased our caches significantly, although some consider his methods dishonorable. Ivor of the Blades. Leliana, they work for you? Let them keep their supplies. We know little of this group. Perhaps instead they have knowledge worth sharing. We can use the resources. Our soldiers can deliver them. We cannot openly accept stolen goods. Of course, we have no way of returning them, so we may discreetly take found goods. Okay. And then secure a route through the Frostbacks. Inquisitor, we explored the Fallow Mire after you cleared the place out. I've stumbled on an old road that leads west to the Frostbacks. If it's cleaned up, you could use it to shave weeks off a journey through the mountains. I'd rather be wet than freezing. An unknown road? It would be perfect for our spies. If it remains secret, I can have my people clear the way. Merchants would give a great deal for this route. They'd reward us handsomely for the location of the road. And we could move troops east to west without risking the mountains. Let's keep this road for our soldiers. They can repair it. Hmm. Hmm. No. Leliana's busy for another 25 minutes. Um. I'm going to have Josephine do this. At your service. And then I'm gonna have Cullen do this one to secure a route through the Frostbacks. All right. Perfect. They can go and do that. And that brings this episode to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to see where we'll go next time. We might head back into the Hinterlands and explore more of what's on offer there. But who knows? We'll have to see when we get there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time.